Hello and welcome to Christie's Cropping and Creating. What I want to do this week for my Christie's Cropping and Creating video is show you how to take a blog post that was a border and we're going to turn it into a page topper. So I'm going to be using this technique right here where you take your, your frame border punches and um, you go around the edge instead of just across the top or or make a true you know 12 by 12 frame so oh I forgot to pull up the picture give me one second let me pull up the picture of what we're gonna do and I also have to fix a reminder on my computer that just popped up so we're gonna use this these instructions from the Creative Memories blog. This is the border that we're gonna work with, but again, we're gonna turn it into a page. So hopefully I can move fairly quickly in telling you how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna use, this as my background paper. This is gonna be the paper that my pumpkin is gonna be, no, that's wrong. <laughs> This is the paper that my pumpkin border is going to be made out of. It's going to layer on top of this, and then that will be on top of this. And I will make a little ribbon to go across it, either with this paper or with this paper. I want to use this one, but I'm afraid when I use this one that some of the other elements, like layering the embellishments and things, won't show up as well. So I'm not 100% sure. We're gonna play that by ear as we get to it. So you're gonna need your pumpkin patch. Yes, pumpkin patch frame punch. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make your base with a 12 inch by three inch piece. Now, again, this is my base page. I should have moved it just now, but since I didn't, I'll <laughs> I'll wait and take care of that in a minute. So this is going to be 12 inches by 3 inches, and the back, the back of my paper is directional. So since my border is going to go horizontally, I'm going to cut it so that when it's going horizontally across my page, I still have the 12 inches. But this is 12 by 3. And this is what I mean about how it will be the base for my pumpkin. The, the paper that you're going to make your pumpkin border with, that's the next cut we're going to make. And this you need to cut at 12 inches by 4 inches. If, you're, if the back of your paper is not directional, don't worry about it. If it is, just make sure again that if you want to continue to use that piece of paper for something that you'll have the things going in the right way. This is one of those papers that the leaves are kind of going all over the place. So for the most part, it doesn't really matter which way I cut it. But again, this is gonna be 12 inches by four inches. From here, actually, no, never mind. <laughs> From here, we're going to punch our pumpkins. And I'm going to use a piece of cardboard to catch my pumpkin scraps, just because it's easier to wipe off the cardboard than it is to do the, the mats. But I'm going to start over here on the wing where it shows you how to start with your frame, you've got that, that blue line right there or the silver line right through there that interrupts the pattern that's in blue. So the edge of my paper, I need it pushed all the way up against the back of the tray, but then also even over here with that silver line. After I punch there, I'm gonna take my paper and actually, I think you can do it either way. You can, um, never mind. 
<laughs> I'm about to, to mess mess y'all up. So now I want to put this, flip the paper, put the the edge again right here at that. Punch. I'll have a square left over. And now I have the edge going along the side and the top. Now I can put it back in, and this was my first punch, and I want to even make the, the pattern, the pumpkin pattern that's already punched, even with the pattern that is on the wing, and just go ahead and go along the, the top of your border. I think it's going to be five punches. It might just be four. One, two, three. Yeah, this is the fourth one. So it is just four, and when you get to this fourth one, punch it, and now I'm left again with that wing, right? So now I want to take my paper, put it in so that that edge is even with that silver line. Punch. And I didn't quite get it completely off, but it was just barely hanging on. So now I have that square. And then once again, I have the pumpkins on either end. And apparently we're going to be cutting off this, this edge. You have to have it that thick so that you've got something to hang on to as you put it into the punch. So I'm sure that's why we cut it a little bit thicker than the other. Let me lock this and put this out of the way and move my trash. And I'm gonna be getting my trimmer back. When I said hello and welcome, I don't think I told you, I'm Christy Bolin. I am a Creative Memories Advisor in South Carolina. And I really appreciate you watching today. And if you have not already, subscribed to my channel please do so so that you'll see when I have new things come out we're just going to cut off that bottom edge it's right at one inch if you want an exact measurement so just make sure you have your paper even and cut that off and that can be used on another project in the future so I have this ready I have this is what we cut first. So now it's going to layer on top of that. And I'm not sure that it says it in the instructions, but it looks to me like that, like the corners of this base are corner rounded. So I'm going to take my two way corner rounder and I'm going to round all four of these corners just for a little bit of a finishing touch since. It, it looks like that's what is done. And maybe it is in the instructions and I just missed it um, when I really quickly glanced over, over it. So this is how that's gonna be layered. Um, let's see, I'm gonna leave my trimmer on my table while I adhere my pieces because I'm just gonna be getting my trimmer right back out. But I'm gonna put this down on top of the this base and then we'll move on to the next step where I am going to make the the little runner that's going to go across this really blank section here so there's what that will look like and then when I put it on my base paper up at the top. See how cute that's going to be? That's just going to look really, really cute. Oh, you know what? I didn't get that even. Let me fix it really quick. This is why I love repositionable tape runner. I did not realize I was so worried about getting the, the ends even with the 12 inch length that I didn't pay attention that I was not getting it even along the bottom. So, oh, <laughs> and now I messed that up by running my hand across it, but I can fix it. Okay, so that'll work for that. Now we're going to get, 
I'm going to try to use this paper to make my little ribbon that goes across. But again, I'm not really sure that it's going to work. So we may end up making two of these. This piece of paper is going to be eight inches by one and a quarter. So I'm going to cut a one and a quarter inch piece. And after I cut that, I will turn, well, before I even shorten it down to the eight inches, I'm going to see how some of this will show up or if it will or won't show up. I think these are some of the embellishments that I'm going to use. Hmm. It might not be so bad, so I think I will go ahead and shorten this. So it's I'm going to shorten it down to eight inches. Do need to pull my arm out for that. I guess I could have just put it at the four inch, and then that would have been basically the the difference. This little piece can be used another time, and because I want this to turn into a ribbon edge, I'm just going to gently fold this. And I'm going to notch the ends to make it look like a ribbon. There may be an easier way to do it than what I'm doing it, than what I'm doing. But, but actually, that's not so hard. <laughs> so I'm just kind of gently folding it together, you know, not, not terribly creasing it because it's going to be unfolded in the grand scheme of things. And then I'm just cutting across from the folded end to the point so that now I'll have a ribbon. And I'm going to adhere this along through here. You know what? I think I like this. I'm glad I decided to, to stick with these papers. It might be a little busy for some, but I think it's going to be okay. So this will go basically like this. And then I'm going to take some embellishments. You know what, before I get the embellishments, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere all of this base to my page. I'm gonna leave a tiny bit of a margin up at the top, just so that that brown base has maybe a, I don't know, an, anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch frame around the, the top of the border. And then I have some of these embellishments and honestly all of these things are a little bit older. Some of them are from Happy Fall Y'all. Some of them are from um, Golden Harvest. But our newest collection is called, what is it called? Harvest. Um, I can't think of the name of it. And I don't have any pieces, which is why I'm using this instead. I did have an order come, but I have it marked for something else. So I can't use any of those pieces. So I'm going to make a, um, a little centerpiece title banner thing. And I'm just thinking I like, I know that I need to do like a, an uneven number and that kind of thing. So I just thought I would add some some pops of color and such. And then some of this I will use foam squares, but I kind of wanted to, to see how I want to build it before I start pulling out my adhesives. So I don't know if I do this, then I've got an even number on each side, but I might and do this. I've noticed that with the fall decorations at different stores this year, there's a lot of blue 
a lot of blues, various shades of blue. And so I'm not so sure that I think, I think I'm getting too much now. So let me take something back out here. Since all of those are fold, maybe I should leave the fold blue one in. I think this is what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go with this. So let me start by adhering my base pieces. And you know what? I don't, it, it might not matter to some of y'all, but I don't want to cover up as much of that pumpkin. So let me pull that down. And if I do it like this, I'll have the green on each side. I'm gonna, I'm going to put home squares on the, the this piece and on the together and I don't often do that but I think I will and then from there if I don't like it I'll know not to ever do it again <laughs> it's a trial and error kind of page thought I'd already stuck that down apparently I had not so I'll do, I'll use the smaller pieces on my word and I'll use the larger ones on the, the base there. Well, I'll just knock that right off. We get one more here. I like this. I'm glad I did that layered. Yay. You know what? I like that so much. I'm going to do a foam, a large foam square on this one as well. Actually, I'll do, I'll mix it up. And I know our foam squares come in different sizes now. I still had so many unused of the original size packaging for foam squares that I haven't even opened my different sizes so I can't even discuss with you guys right now what the different sizes are but have that one come out like this and then this piece oh that piece got stuck down under the the foam square for the title there so I'm liking how that's looking and now I just need some photo mats. So hopefully this canary is going to be nice with these other fall colors because this is the cardstock that I pulled out. And move that. Hopefully I didn't get too much in the way here. I'm just going to really quickly make some 4x4 four four and 4x6 four mats. And I'm thinking probably two four by sixes and a four by four would be great on this layout. You can always adjust up a quarter of an inch or down a quarter of an inch if you prefer to have some sort of mat. Meaning, you know, use the cardstock to mat your photo. And of course, you could always go. Um, down a little bit in the size of your photo too. So that if you've got this four by six mat, you can cut your photo down to three and three quarters by five and a quarter or three and a half by five. So that would give me a way Oh, I'm off the bottom of the page and I didn't even realize it. 
So this will give me a way to do three, but I'm not really feeling three in that type of layout. So, hmm, this or maybe this. If I come over like that, then I can do some, make me a journaling box and have that go there. So this is a really quick and maybe not 100% perfect, but just a different way of taking a border from the blog post and turning it into a layout. I guess you could also have your photo further over and then do your journaling in the middle. Actually, I think I like that better for me. So I'm not even gonna take the time to put my mats down right now. I'll just go ahead and stop the video. Again, thank you for watching. And if you need to order anything, if you don't already have an advisor, my website is creativememories.com slash user slash Christy Bolin. It's right here at the top. Christy is spelled K-R-I-S-T-I. -I. Bolin is spelled B-O-L-I-N. So I would be happy to help you if you need to place an order for anything. You can do so at my website. If you need to email me, you can email me at christybolin at gmail.com. Again, Christy Bolin is spelled K-R-I-S-T-I-B-O-L-I-N. I do teach a weekly class to a subscription group. So if you want to email me and ask me about Christy's Croppers, I would love to have you join that group. Our new quarter starts next Wednesday. We meet at 7.30 on Wednesdays. That's Eastern time. But the call, the class is recorded and you can always watch the recording at your own convenience. And I am also doing a prize drawing when my subscription numbers reach 500. So please join my Christie's Cropping and Creating. Subscribe to my channel and hopefully you will win one of the prizes. Y'all take care. Have a great rest of your week. And I will see you next week, which is already October. I can't believe it. Have a great day. Happy cropping.